Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the masquerade. I'll be your host this fine. Wait a minute! Wait, 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 wait. You can't be the host. That's not tradition. <laughs> and around here, tradition. <laughs> it's very important. No, the host tonight has to be the wonderful Pat Harkin. Hurrah! Yeah. 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 No, 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 Ladies and gentlemen. I'm not, I'm not going out there. No, no, I'm not. You can't make me. You can't. It is my pleasure to introduce Pat, better him than me, Hawk. Apparently they can make me. <laughs> Good evening, Hurrah. ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the third Irish Disworld Convention Masquerade! <laughs> the Masquerade is always a fantastic part of every convention. I love it. It's one of the few chances I get every year to stand under a hot spotlight for two hours. <laughs> But it's very different from, from a lot of the other things you go to see. You have to remember that tonight, everybody who's coming up on stage is, just like you, a Discworld fan who's here to have fun. And tonight, they're taking one extra step, and they're being the fun. They're being the entertainment. So I want to hear lots of applause, lots of clapping, which is another word for applause, really, now I can think about it. But lots of cheering and lots of noises like that. But I know you will, because I know you're all nice people, because you're all Discworld fans. And we're all nice when anybody's watching. <laughs> we have a few simple rules, because we're simple people. <laughs> Firstly, there is to be no flash and iconography in the hall. Except now. Except now. Take a photograph now if you like, it's a wonderful empty stage. <laughs> You're never going to see it this pristine again, so if you want to go for it now. It's not to spoil your fun, it is, without wishing to invoke me on health and safety, it is for the protection of the good people who are currently back there cowering in the darkness, but who will be coming out here shortly in long capes that can be tripped over, in masks that obscure vision, wearing unfamiliar footwear, coming up onto a rickety stage, the edges of which are very poorly marked, with light shining in their eyes. So, it's, the last thing we want is to dazzle somebody and have them miss their step and fall off. We, we know that that never ends well. So that's, that's the rule. No flash iconography. I'm sure there'll be a chance at the end of the evening to take photographs if you want to. Uh, the other thing is, should you have in your possession a portable clax tower, <laughs> can you please set it to silent so that all the clacking shutters don't, uh, don't disturb matters? <laughs> ah, at least they were prepared for me. Right. Three Irish Discworld conventions. Three co chairs. Three fates. Three witches. Three little pigs and the three degrees. Three <coughs> is a magic number. And we continue that theme with our three judges for tonight. Now, our judges have the almost impossible task of picking three winners, or a winner and two runners-up. There was some debate going on earlier as to what that was. But we have three talented, experienced, good-looking judges somewhere. <laughs> and if you're very good and very quiet, I'll tell you who they are. Firstly, we have the inimitable Jacqueline Simpson, author of The Folklore of Discworld. I am convinced there is a game to be had by taking Jacqueline into the bar and challenging her 
by giving her either a part of the world or a rank commoner peasant witch and a horrible method of dying <laughs> and tell her to think of a legend featuring those two and I'm, I'm sure she could do it she would never need to buy a drink for the rest of her life <laughs> but that would be good Jacqueline is here as one of our judges tonight We also have the lovely Sheila, one of your co-chairs. <laughs> Sheila, I am reliably informed, and when I say reliably, I mean I was told by the other two co-chairs, so God knows whether this is correct or not, that she was a great majorette in school, <laughs> and is especially proud of the time she threw the mace in the air and caught it before it hit her on the head. <laughs> Apparently, she can't remember all the other attempts. <laughs> Sheila! <laughs> and finally, Bernard Stanley Pearson Beauregard. <laughs> <laughs> you stand accused here of being a cunning artificer with malice aforethought who has created down the years more wondrous delights of Discworld alchemy than any other person, living, dead, or uncertain. <laughs> I cannot turn around in my own house without knocking some of your schmutter off a shelf. <laughs> in fact, last time I was down in Wincanton, I was thinking, stood in your shop, and I was thinking to myself, I've got more than this. <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is, it's true. <laughs> Bernard Pearson! We have for you tonight 13 acts. Well, there are 13 numbers written on this bit of paper. But as will become clear as things go on, it's not quite that simple. It never is. The judges are faced with a slightly difficult task of trying to compare people who have never entered a masquerade before people who maybe came along to the convention, didn't even know there was a masquerade, and now find themselves in it. Probably a process which involved emptying several glasses, but anyway, they're now in it. We have people who have entered many, many masquerades before, so people have been assigned categories. Sadly, all it says on my bit of paper here is the letters A, N, or M, which I am going to assume stand for novice, who has never entered before? No. No, okay. Um, okay, what's A? Apprentice? Uh, Acolyte? No, Aardvark? Amateur? <laughs> amateur. Okay. We have the A category. I assume these are people who have never entered before. Okay. Our next category is M for master? Yes. And what does that mean? They had definitely entered before and possibly won. Okay. Possibly. And what's N? Pretty sure they entered before. <laughs> <laughs> Almost definitely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I can work with that. The reason I bring this whole sorry business up is that occasionally you will see two people sometimes even portraying the same character and wonder why the judges picked one over the other. Sometimes the judges will favour the novice, the person who's never had a go before, uh, as opposed to the person who has spent 12 years building a costume, touring junk shops and dress shops and making bits and pieces. Um, I think the longest judging we ever had was the year there were only two children entered the masquerade, both as Tiffany Aiken. <laughs> Three days they were in there. <laughs> anyway, right, I think we've covered everything. Uh, we've covered the, the, the Clax Tower rule, we've covered the Iconograph rule. Should there be a fire alarm, I'd like you to clear a space so that I can get out that door there <laughs> and then follow me in an orderly fashion.